going to talk about the writing section. Specifically, we're going to talk about the multiple choice grammar questions are on the writing section. Now, there's a lot of mystery surrounding the writing section still. A lot of people are saying that colleges don't really care about the writing section yet and don't quite know what to make of it. And that's true in a lot of cases. A lot of colleges will say uh, right in the uh, instructions for application that uh, they are not going to consider the writing section. But more and more colleges are. Uh, and there actually was a recent study that said that the score on the writing section was actually the strongest predictor of the three scores of how you're going to do in college. And so uh, that gave it some credibility. So um, I don't think it's a good idea to ignore this section any longer. And we're going to talk about how to handle both the improving sentences questions and the error identification. Uh, now there are 49 questions on the test. This is going to cover uh, all but six of them. Uh, there are six improving paragraphs questions at the very end of one of the writing sections. We're not going to talk about those today, but there's only six of them, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but we're going to uh, jump right in. We're going to talk about the technique, and we're going to talk about what rules you're going to have to learn. So let's get started. Okay, so the first type of question we're going to deal with is uh, error identification. Uh, now, there's less of these, but uh, a lot of students struggle with them, and the approach is very straightforward. Now, these are the questions that uh, I require you to find the error, not necessarily fix it, right? You just have to find it and circle it. So, uh, we have a three-step approach, and how you go down the approach is going to depend on whether there's an error at all and how good you are at grammar. And we're going to see that once we get into the questions. So the first step is always, do I recognize an error? That is, do I see something in the question, in the sentence that's wrong? Uh, if you uh, say yes, then you need to name it. That is, you need to say what kind of error it is. If it's just, uh, yeah, it feels wrong, uh, then we're going to have to sort of go with no. So it's either yes or no. Uh, and then if uh, you can name it, it's fine. You circle it, you're done, you move on to the next one. If it's no, you have to check the other ones. And if you check all the other ones and you're still sort of unsure, chances are there's no error. So um, we're going to see this in action in a few seconds. Let's get started. Now, just like the math questions, these are organized by difficulty. So I'm always going to talk about the actual uh, number because that's important. So let's look at the first one. It says, the regularly scheduled conference between my tutor and me is set for Friday but my low grades in chemistry requires me to arrange an earlier meeting. Now I can look at this uh, and say I see an error or I don't see an error. Again, those are the only two options at this point. So let's just say for argument's sake I don't see an error right off the bat. The uh, trick is to look at each answer choice, ask yourself what part of speech it is, and then ask yourself what kind of rules uh, can be associated with that particular part of speech. So I say regularly scheduled. These look like adjectives and adverbs. What do I know about them? Well, they need to modify, um, uh, adjective needs to modify a noun, and then adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs, right? So regularly scheduled conference between my tutor and me. Uh, that works. Between my tutor and me. Um, a lot of students like to say my tutor and I, uh, but if you took out my tutor, you would say between me and someone, right? If you sp switched it around. Uh, so me is actually the correct word. And in fact, between something and I is never correct uh, because it's always object of a preposition. So we need the, um, the object. Uh, is, part of speech, is a verb. Um, is refers to conference, singular, singular, subject verb agreement works. But my low grades in chemistry requires. We have another verb here, right? We're looking for subject verb agreement generally with verbs. Uh, what requires my low grades? Oop, that is plural. That is singular. Remember, with verbs, it's reversed. So we found the error. And that's why you have to go through them one at a time, because we know that when you um, read it all at once, it might be overwhelming. But doing one at a time really makes it easy. So uh, this is an example of a subject verb agreement error. Now why was this so tricky? Well, the word next to chem uh, requires was singular, right? Chemistry is singular. So it looks like it matches, but the subject is grades, not chemistry. Okay, let's go on to number uh, 22. And Tyler's novel, The Accidental Tourist, features a character whose obsession with saving time and money are absurd yet somehow plausible. Now let's see, I, I just did the other one, so I'm an expert on subject verb agreement, and I know immediately that uh, the obsession is the subject, and R is the verb, singular, plural, that's a mistake, right? Now, if I can name it, if I can say that is a subject verb agreement error, I can go ahead and circle D. 
and I named it, so I circled it. And that is what is so nice about knowing the rules. So you're probably wondering at this point, how many rules am I going to need to learn for this test? And the answer is about a dozen. Uh, and I say learn as in um, you know, relearn. You've learned this at some point in your life. So at the end of the video, I'll, I'll provide a link for uh, a list of all the uh, grammar rules that are tested on the SAT, so stay tuned. All right, let's show one more. 25. At the art show, Amy uh, enjoyed looking at her friend Mark's innovative paintings, which she thought were more original than the other artists. Okay. Again, ask yourself, do I recognize an error? If you do, great, you have to name it. Again, let's for argument's sake say that I don't see an error. I have to go through them. Enjoyed looking at, we have a verb, uh, enjoyed looking at her friend Mark's innovative painting. Nothing wrong with that. We have a subject, we have a verb. Uh, which she thought were more original. Now, here you could say, well, is it that or which? Uh, I never knew that rule. SAT does not test that versus which. Uh, so it's just as important to know which rules uh, are tested and, and which rules aren't tested so you don't drive yourself crazy. That versus which is never tested on the SAT, so don't worry about that versus which. Uh, we really need, just need to worry about this pronoun here, she. Amy, she thought, not her thought, right? She thought we're good. Um, we're more original comparing something, right? Comparing paintings, right? We get down to this one, and we just said we're comparing paintings, but D is comparing paintings to artists, right? Which you thought were more original than the artists. This is what we call a faulty comparison. Uh, what the sentence meant to say is that the paintings were more innovative than the paintings of other artists, uh, but it set up a faulty comparison. It's not apples to apples. D is the correct answer. Uh, that, because that is the grammatical mistake. Okay, so a quick rundown. We saw two subject verb agreement errors and we saw one uh, faulty comparison. So those are two big rules that are on the SAT. Now let's take a look at some improving sentences. Okay, so next up we have improving sentences. Uh, now improving sentences uh, give you a sentence and ask you to fix it if necessary. Uh, now that is challenging for a lot of students because they would prefer just to identify the errors and move on. Uh, but a lot of students actually like these more because uh, you don't have to spot the error immediately in order to find it eventually because you have answer choices to use for reference. Now we're going to go through both eventualities in the future, but I just want to give you a high level overview of the technique, right? First, again, just like the other questions you're going to ask, do I recognize uh, an error? And that's, again, a really important um, thing to ask yourself. Do I see an error and can I name it, right? Now, after you... Um, Answer that. You can answer it yes or no. Yes, get rid of A. Right? A means no error. It's exactly the same way it's written in the um, uh, in the sentence above. Uh, and then look for other answer choices that have that same error. So I know that there's subject verb agreement error. I'm going to get rid of A. I'm going to get rid of any other answer choice with subject verb agreement error. We're going to see this in a second. Uh, and then look for uh, differences. And we'll see that in a second. Uh, no, you're going to go straight to comparing the answer choices to, to um, each other. Now again, um, you have... Uh, a third step here, and here's a big difference between um, error ID and uh, improving sentences. Once you pick, uh, once you have uh, answer choices uh, eliminated, sometimes there will be more than one. All right, there will be more than one answer choice left, uh, and all the answer choices that remain are grammatically correct. In this case, you're going to worry about quality of writing, and that is, you're going to have to pick the one that's better written. And again, we're going to see an example of that in a second. So this is 11 out of 14, so it's a difficult question. Fabric was very expensive in the United States before the Industrial Revolution. This is why scraps were saved and recycled into such items as patchwork quilts and dog clothes. Okay, again, we read this, and first thing we ask is, do I see an error? Now, for this case, I'll say yes, I see the mistake, and the mistake is what we call a comma splice. Comma splice is when you take two complete sentences and join them with a comma. That's bad. You're not allowed to do that. You need a semicolon, you need a period, something that is a stronger punctuation than a comma. So, because I know that the comma here is wrong, uh, I'm going to get rid of A. And I'm also going to get rid of any other comma splices, right? So, any other uh, answer choice that has a comma and two complete uh, sentences on either side, I'm getting rid of. So, revolution, we already know that that was a complete sentence. This explains why scraps were used and saved, blah, blah, blah. That's a complete sentence. That's also a comma place. I'm also getting rid of it, right? Uh, and so, uh, it does not create a complete sentence, so we're going to leave it for now. This one gets rid of, a uh, D gets rid of the comma, so clearly not a comma place if there's no comma. And then E replaces it with a semicolon. I just said replacing it with a semicolon 
is okay, right? But that's only if you leave the rest of the sentence alone, right? Uh, if you use a semicolon, you need two complete sentences. You can't have a sentence fragment. Now, if you just change this is why to resulting in, guess what? It's a sentence fragment. So I'm going to get rid of uh, E as well. So, I have two answer choices left. And so, and uh, a comma, and so, and and so that, right? So, let's take a look. Fabric was very expensive in the United States before the Industrial Revolution, comma, and so scraps were saved and recycled into such items as patchwork quilts and doll clothes. And fabric was very expensive in the United States before the Industrial Revolution, uh, and so that scraps were saved and recycled into such items as patchwork quilts and doll clothes. Okay, so I need to pick the better written one, because both are grammatically okay, right? Well, there are two things that you need to know about good writing. The first is kiss. Keep it short and sweet. The second is Kim. Keep the attended meaning. Okay, so they both mean sort of the same thing. So I'm going to go with the more concise one. I'm going to go with the one that keeps it short and sweet, and I'm going to pick C over D. And that's the final step, and that's a big distinction between uh, just grammar and then grammar plus good writing. So let's look at another one. Number 13. Although the exact cause of type 2 diabetes is unknown, experts say that for some people, improper diet and lack of exercise contributes to the onset of the disease, right? So, we read it and we say, hmm, I'm not sure I see an error. And that's okay, right? If we look back at the uh, technique, it's okay not to see an error. You just have to go through the answer choices and look for differences, right? So we see... A is what is written in the sentence. B, exercise, comma, they contribute. Exercise, contribute. Exercise, contributing. Exercise has been contributing. So the big difference in all these answer choices is um, the verb, right? There's a they there. We had to pay attention to that. But mostly, like, the verb changes, right? We have contributes, contribute, contributing. So let's start with A and C, because that's the most... Um, obvious contrast. It's just a, it's a singular verb and a plural verb. So what is the subject, right? Although the exact cause of type 2 diabetes is unknown, experts say that for some people, diet and lack of exercise. Diet and lack of exercises. We have two subjects joined by an and. Makes a plural, right? Guess what? A is out. And that's exactly why we, we uh, consider the answer choices, uh, we compare them to each other. Because now, even though the sentence looked like it was fine, it's actually wrong, right? It's contribute. And then we have uh, contribute, they contribute, right? Well, let's leave that for now. I don't see anything wrong grammatically, right? Exercise, comma, contributing. Exercise, for some reason, improper diet and lack of exercise contributing to the onset of the disease. And then exercise has been contributing. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to get rid of D because it is now a sentence fragment. And then we have B, C, and E. All three of them seem grammatically okay. So I'm going to go back to kiss Kim. All right, I'm going to go with the shortest answer that preserves the intended meaning. And again, in this case, it is... C. So it's a little bit of art, it's a little bit of science, but you're always going to go with the, uh, if you're left with multiple answer choices that have no grammatical mistakes, you're going to go with the most concise, the most well written one. Okay, the bristlecone pine has a maximum lifespan of about 5,000 years, which is much longer than almost any other tree. Okay, so again, we look at this and we say, hmm, Patrick just taught us about faulty comparison, so let's make sure that we're comparing the right things, right? Do I see an error? Well, uh, I see the lifespan is being compared to, hmm, looks like it's being compared to the other tree, right? So, uh, or any other tree. So that is the error, right? Again, this is a faulty comparison. So yes, I spot the error. First thing you do when you spot an error is get rid of A. We need a valid comparison between lifespan of the tree and lifespan of the tree, right? So we get to the rest of the answer choices, and we get rid of any other answer choices that have that um, same error, right? Uh, and this is much longer than almost any other tree, also a faulty comparison. It is much longer than that of, okay, so this that refers to lifespan, right? So that fixes the problem, we're going to leave it for now. Much longer than that of, okay, again we have that that, that fixes the um, 
faulty comparison, and much the longest stuff that is not even English, right? So we get rid of um, E as well. And we're left with two. So we have the bristle cone pine has a maximum lifespan of about 5,000 years. It is much longer than that of almost any other tree. Whoa, I just learned about that rule too. This is now a cosplace, right? Complete thought? Complete thought. C is no longer valid. C is the answer. So sometimes you don't need to worry about good writing versus bad writing. It shows up in about half of the improving sentence questions, but sometimes it's pure grammar. Get rid of all the grammatical mistakes, you have one extra choice left, and that's what we saw right here. Okay, so that wasn't so bad, right? You have to have a strong technique, and you have to know the rules. Now, uh, when you're starting either type of question, you always have to ask yourself, do I recognize the error? And be honest with yourself. It's either yes or no. It's no maybe, right? Uh, so, uh, there's something that to do if you say yes, there's something to do if you say no, and it's okay. The technique allows for that, right? Um, obviously, it's much easier to say yes or no if you know the rules. So, visit the list, uh, the link at the bottom of the uh, page at the, under information, <clears throat> and I will provide a list of the grammatical rules tested on the SAT, and that's sort of a cool way to learn. Uh, again, it's about a dozen rules. Uh, you'll know what is on the test, you'll know what's not on the test, and again, you can move through the questions much more quickly and get more correct, which is obviously the, the goal of all of this. So, I uh, hope it wasn't too painful, and I will see you guys in a few weeks. By the way, if you ever want to see anything covered, just drop me an email, contact at specificsprep.com, and you can give me an idea for a future video lesson. Thanks a lot. See you in a few weeks.